Hello, good evening and welcome to the Tomb Review for this Thursday night show with myself and Stato. We're looking at a couple of people that are linked with the club. One, of course, is already here. Um, but before we do get into action, uh, please leave a like on the video. Hit that thumbs up. It really does help us. And if you are new to us, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you hit click the subscribe button, we're, we're heading towards 29,000 at a rapid rate of knots. Click the notification bell so you know when we go, go live and you'll be with us as part of the TTR family. And, of course, if you want to be a, a proper member of the TTR family, a real a membership one, click that members button, the join button. Uh, it's a paid subscription, really. But it does entitle you to prizes and things like that. When we do raffles on the show and things like that, very worthwhile thing to be part of. Uh, how are you, Sato? Uh, I've been better. I'm, I'm not particularly happy with the news about the FA Cup replays being scrapped. Mm. Uh, I think it's... Well, I think it's absolutely disgusting. It is it is worth obviously normally we would save something like this until TTR Friday or or maybe Paul might touch on it in a, in a video but obviously it's just dropped and I personally am absolutely disgusted with it as a, as a general footballing fan mm. um I like all kinds of football and it's it's very disturbing um I appreciate that we whinge a lot about decisions that potentially affect us as a club um this is a bigger one. This this is kind of, you know, it may help us, but sod us. There's the you know, there's no if there's no football, then we we can't play football. So the you need to look at the big picture sometimes. Um, I mean, I've got something I want to read, but I'll wait till um. Oh, well, if you've got any comments on this, Billy, I'm sure you well, it, it, have. It, it, you say it helps us. It doesn't help us because we're always drawn away from home, aren't we? We're always drawn away from home against fellow Premier League sides. Um, it takes away the, the, the magic of the FA Cup to me is, is is the joint killings and things like that, which if they're drawn away from home, isn't going to happen anymore. It really isn't. You know, it's 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 yeah. They, 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 they may get a draw away from home and then they get a replay, but if that's some crap the equation for them, it devalues the competition in my opinion. I, I, I think it's. I mean, the FA Cup's the the oldest and greatest cup competition in the world in my opinion as well. Uh, to devalue it, just narrow it down so it suits the top sides. The, the, the Premier League sides, yeah, it, it, it doesn't sit well with me either. I think it's a really poor decision. Again, one which has obviously been dictated to the, the FA and Premier League by uh, those that play lots of European football, I would imagine. Yeah, well, it's 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 one of those, isn't it? The FA Cup specifically, um, not. I appreciate it's only the replays that have been scrapped, but it's a lot of money. It's a lot of so for people who haven't seen and for people who are abroad. Obviously, the FA Cup's been going for well over 100 years. It's the traditional knockout competition in this country um, in which the earliest qualifying rounds start in August. And it, it doesn't matter what level you are in the pyramid, you can enter the FA Cup. Whether you're in a local kickabout village club, you enter the FA Cup, albeit at the very early qualifying stages. However, you you everybody gets a crack at it. Everybody. It doesn't matter... It doesn't matter who you are. Everyone gets a crack at the FA Cup. And for some of the non-league clubs and the lower level clubs, getting a decent FA Cup draw and then potentially a replay on top of it if they've earned it brings in a lot of gate receipts. It's very important for, and especially if they can get a big tie uh, and get it televised. Um, there's good, good, good money in that for the lower league clubs. And that is the difference between a club going under or not. It's the difference between them being able to afford additional coaches um, employ people such as you know for, for cafeterias and cleaning for getting new facilities mm. floodlights because there are some difficult rules in this country where once you get promoted up certain levels uh, you have to have floodlights therefore some teams actively avoid getting promoted because they can't afford the changes necessary to even go into the higher leagues it's it's a strange system um, and it's one that the FA Cup kind of helps it helps you bridge that gap um, especially in the lower levels, a lot of a lot of players are on non-contracts, short contracts, part timers, or they're not even footballers. They've just got a full time job. Um, so building a project that you can push through the leagues is extremely complicated at lower level. It's not an impossible to be fair. Um, so you don't have the time to do a big build. Therefore, a nice cup run can keep the club alive for one season. If you get a good coach and a couple of good lads turn up, you can have a deep run in the FA Cup as a as, as a smaller club and it can massively boost your club financially. So this is really going to hurt the smaller clubs. Um, it's, un, it's an unnecessary change. Um, and Tranmere Rovers, of all people, which obviously we don't particularly like, uh, like after the way they 
battered our players on the, on the pitch in that uh, Carabao Cup tie a couple of years ago. But they've posted a statement, and I think it's 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 worth reading. So they they've posted Tranmere Rovers condemn the disgraceful decision taken by the FA in the Premier League to change the format of the FA Cup, including the scrapping of replays. There was no consultation with football league clubs, national league clubs, or grassroots clubs to whom the composition competition represents not only their best opportunity to create lifelong memories for supporters, but also a hugely important source of income. We also understand that the FA council members were not consulted about the changes. The decision and the way it was taken demonstrate a total lack of respect for the football pyramid and its fans. Football belongs to all of us and the decision should not be taken in backroom deals in which only the very wealthiest clubs are allowed to participate. It is yet another eloquent example of the 19th century governance that means that football simply cannot regulate itself and needs the independent football re regulator to have real teeth. We condemn the, the changes wholeheartedly and urge the FA to suspend them immediately until all stakeholders in the game are properly consulted. I think that's perfect. A perfect statement. I think everybody should tweet that. It's perfect. 100%. Uh, Pilo Kid said the FA Cup has been devalued over the years, now even worse. It all started when they allowed Man United to pull out of it years ago to go in the World Club Championship for me. Um, and then they, they they took away replays from certain parts of the, of the, of the, of the competition, like quarterfinals and onwards. It, it's a devalued competition. And it's when I was a kid, the FA Cup was something massive. It really was. You know, the final was watched by people all around the world. Um, giant killings were a thing that happened every year. They were well celebrated and well documented. It just doesn't seem the same competition now. It's, it, to me now, it's just a route into Europe. It's, it's silverware. Of course it is. But is it really that much bigger than the Carabao Cup? I don't think it is these days. I really don't. I really don't. Uh, there's lots of things that, that you know, people are saying. I've always loved the FA Cup because of upsets, says Bath. Exactly. That's going to stop now. Uh, well, certainly won't be anywhere near as frequent as it used to be. And it still isn't really, to be honest. I don't like that they've got the replay. Not to mention TNT Sports will be taken over soon as well. Ripping off fans even more. Uh, can see the Elite Six getting loads of home. Well, that's, that happens already, Mick. Uh, ties and they say football isn't corrupt. Uh, Josh says, I know this may be a dumb question from a naive American, but why not play the season straight? No mixing tournament and season games. Couldn't they condense it also all uh, regular games and tournament games? I mean, I don't think everyone's ever mentioned that before. Um, you know, have, this, have your, your league season and at the end of it, have cups, cup competitions. But I guess FA Cup's a great leveller, isn't it? You know, you play in different weathers through the season against sides with 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 not as good pitches with not as good crowds with smaller stadiums um yeah you, you can't do that with the FA Cup it's not possible because of the amount of the, the sheer volume of teams in the competition yeah um like i mentioned there you you start qualifying in august and the finals not till uh may april may well, before so, that, I think it starts in July so you know the, the non league sunday even sunday, it, well yeah potentially july it's really, so it's, really early the, the next, as soon as somebody wins the FA Cup, the qualifying for the next year only starts. It's not not a few week, not more than a few weeks after that. Um, so yeah, people have a preseason and then it's and then it's qualifying. So <laughs> you could put them go out. <laughs> Wait till Man United get dumped out on penalties in FA Cup, and then they will be back. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? This the big kicker is that this is this decision has been made by the Premier League and the FA. Um, and it's extremely disrespectful. The Premier League has only existed since '92, so it's a very it, it's in its infancy in terms of an organisation, and to 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 throw its weight around to that level is beyond disrespectful. It's disgusting. Um, it's a traditional competition that's been around for over a hundred years. It's it's not okay. Some people need to lose jobs for this, in my opinion. It's a disgraceful, extremely out of touch decision where nobody's been consulted. People need people need firing. It's there needs to be examples made of this. We've had the whole Super League wrestling match from a few years ago. They're not getting it. They're not getting it at all. And it's it's not good enough. Yeah. I mean it's it's 150 years in three years' time, actually, since the first FA Cup final stuff. So so you know, it's 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 a it's a massive part of, the, of football's history, not just in this country, but around the world. We've got a super chat for me in four ninety nine. He says, uh, "Toon trainer that is, Mister Spoons." He says, "Agree one hundred percent, Alex. Our FA Cup is all of those things you stated, but it is also the difference between our FA Cup 
and all other competitions worldwide. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Uh, no, so there's enough game, enough game of season to be having replays. Uh, and then we also have, so it goes to pens. Yeah, basically, if it's drawn after extra time, maybe they'll, they'll stop extra time as well. <laughs> no. So um, there is something that I've missed off here. So I don't want anybody again post post show going in the comments. So there is there is something they are going to put thirty three million back into grassroots football. So they've stated to add to around a hundred million that already goes into it. So they they've promised a fee, but obviously there's no there's no kind of indication as to how that's going to be spread out and allocated and distributed. We, we have no idea. Um, and it's it's just messing with something that wasn't broken. Yeah. Uh, King Holland says Ferguson began the denigration of the cup by opting to play in the World Club Championship in, instead in 1900. It, well, he did. He, he wanted to put a kid's side out in the FA Cup and the FA wouldn't let him, so they allowed him to pull out, which is ridiculous. You know, it's it is just a ridiculous way of going on. Well, um, prime example we're playing Spurs, we're playing Spurs in Australia. We can't complain about replays and fixture congestion if we're throwing ties with the big six around halfway across the world. Don't play those fixtures. Simple yeah. as. We don't need to go to America or China for a preseason. Like I appreciate clubs need to improve revenue, but without the fans and without the football, it's all for nothing. It might as well just be a factory, like you know. Indeed, indeed. Uh, I've started this comment, so we can go back to it because it links in with what we're about to talk about. Um, Newcastle United are an advanced stage in their search for a replacement uh, for Manchester United bound sporting director Dan Ashworth, according to the Athletic. Before we go into what we have, what we have, uh, Charles has given us a, a hundred Norwegian kroner uh, in a super chat. Thank you, Charles. Very, very generous of you, mate, and a valued contributor to the channel. Uh, he says, "Hope we stay away from Solanke and Jewsbury Hall." I think that's uh, or Isaac and Bruno won't be impressed. He says, "Well, I don't know about that, but it's an interesting point. Thanks very much for super chat, mate. Uh, right, Stato, let's talk about Paolo Maldini. Indeed, I'm just trying to have a look and see if there's an article about um, what he's just said. Mm, it doesn't say anything unless there's something on. It's probably on Twitter. Yeah, so Paolo Maldini." Um, I'm sure everyone knows who he is in terms of a player. For those of you who've been living under a rock or are maybe a little bit too young, potentially. <coughs> a historical great. Um, there's videos of everybody, even like sort of Marcelo and players of that ilk, um, sort of just being starstruck. There's videos of Thierry Henry being just massively starstruck. Maldini is one of the greatest centre-halves, well, defenders, Fullback to and a half, I and mean, he's played. He's played kind of all across that back four, really. Mm. Um, that that's ever graced the game. He he's played against basically everyone. I think the only person he's not played against is Messi. I think he was injured. He was still playing at that point, but he's played against um, against Ronaldo, um, Nazario, traditional R nine. He's played against Cristiano Ronaldo, Ibrahimovic, all all of the. I think I'm pretty sure he's as old old enough to have played against Maradona as well. I think he goes back. Yeah, that definitely. Far. So he's, he's played. Yeah, he's played all with all of them. He's played with all the greats. Zidane, um, arguably, and Zidane, yeah, arguably the best defender that's ever existed in the history of football. Um, so obviously he's done. Well, yeah, Tom said Shearer. Yeah, sorry, Miss Shearer, of course. Um, so yeah, he he has gone. He, well, he went into. It's not. It's not called director of football. I think they gave it another name. Um, so it was technical director of AC Milan was officially the title, um, and he was responsible for renewing and, and contract negotiations along with transfers and recruitment strategy. So that was what he was he was involved with. Um, it was a mixed bag. There was a lot of good recruitment. There was some poor recruitment. I think there's a lot of stuff there that was a gamble that I think will pay off. Um, well, well, I'm being a bit vague. We'll get into that. Um, and obviously, for people who don't know, <coughs> AC Milan did actually win Serie A a couple of seasons ago off the back of some really smart recruitment and well-put-together team. And that a lot of that was Maldini as well. Um, he has since left. He did get let go. So it was him and... Uh, who was the other guy? It was Ricky Masada got let go. Um, so Maldini was the technical director and Ricky Masada was the sporting director. 
So it was Mr. Cardinale informed them in a meeting. Apparently it was quite a short meeting. There was a bit of a difference of opinion on recruitment strategy going forward. It all kind of fell to pieces, I think, when they the higher-ups got involved in the Rafael Leal contract negotiations over the top of Maldini. It didn't go down very well. Um, and ultimately, he, he's, he left there and he's available. So, thoughts, Billy? Yeah, 100%. You know, I think he's one of these names that brings in players, if you ask me. Um, unbelievable roots in, you know, roots in football through his father as well, who managed Italy, played in the Italian national side in 66. It wasn't a great campaign for them. Also in the squad for 70 uh, when they got to the final. So, you know, it was a massive kind of family thing with his dad and, and, him, and him coming through. I remember first seeing him when he was 18. Uh, in the European Championships of 1988, where you could see the potential. You just could see it. You, you could see how quality this kid was, even at 18. Um, as a player, this is, of course. And, of course, the AC Milan side of the, of the 90s, which won European Champions Leagues, um, with a Dutch influence in there, with Hullet and Van Basten and people like that, Rijkaard, just a massive, massive club. And he was kind of him and Brazy together. Good Lord. You know, it's just a fantastic two two of the greatest defenders ever lived in the same club side. Good lord! Um, but you know, he, he's, he's a name, isn't he? He's just he's just a name. He's a he's he's, he's a legend. You know, to have him as your head of football operations would be a massive massive thing, wouldn't it? Mm. So, I mean, the next thing to move on to is, is what Foxy's brought up already, which, yeah, of course. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> is a lot of people stating that. In a lot of these cases as well, that they're not the main brains behind the recruitment processes. Um, there are certain exceptions to that with with your sort of Paul Mitchells and stuff who have been specifically involved in recruitment roles, exclusively scouting and recruitment roles beforehand. Um, obviously, Maldini's a bit different. He is a bit of a symbol. Um, he worked with a sporting director in Masada. So he's great. he's rightly pointed out that Masada's done a lot of good work. That's fair. I, I don't think I don't think you can completely take it away from Maldini because he ultimately has to sit in those meetings with everyone and make decisions and agree and disagree. Um, and I think, on the whole, their recent recruitment in, in, in well, their recruitment in recent years has been fairly solid. Um, so I was just going to screen share a couple of bits from their recent transfer dealings. Uh, so. Here is their squad at the moment. I'm pretty sure this is at the moment. It is indeed. So, Mike Magnon, Magnon, I think is how we're saying that. Uh, he was a Maldini guy. Obviously, um, uh, Donnarumma went to PSG, so they did lose him. He was the big one of the big jewels in the crown. Lose, losing him and Tonali was a big deal for them uh, in Milan. They lost lost a lot of their sort of. Italian core, the youth prospects. So, but Magnon came in and has been very, very good for them. Um, they've got a nice young sort of spine of the team. The centre halves are good and young as well. You've got Tomori, who has been exceptional for them, and he's still only 26 now. Um, you've got Malik Thior, I'm not sure how we're supposed to say that, uh, who's only 22, and I feel like he's been around forever now. Uh, you've got Pierre Kalulu as well, who's come in, uh, and the lesser known Gabia, who I'm not as familiar with. Um, you've got Kiaia as well, Simon, however we're supposed to say that. Again, we were linked with him once upon a time. So yeah. he's quite old now, but again, he was part of that veteran guard. You've got uh, Mattia Caldara, who I, a little bit a little bit of a shame that he hasn't really worked out. I thought he was great a few years ago, and it's kind of, he, he's been sent out on loan quite a lot. Of course, Teo Hernandez and uh, Calabria, we both know, because we've played AC Milan twice this year, so people yeah. might be familiar with a lot of these. Um, you've got Ben Asser, who is a 26-year-old peak age midfielder. Yassine Adli is nice and young. Loftus Cheek is doing very, very good things for them in midfield. Uh, Reinders is, is obviously decent, came on against us. Uh, Pobega, they recruited a few years ago and is now a solid 24-year-old midfielder. Um, there's just loads of positives in here. Of course, some of this recruitment was post Maldini, you know, Pulisic was afterwards, Chukweze was afterwards, Noa Okafor, they got from uh, one of the Red Bull teams, I think it was Salzburg, um, who is, again, very young and promising. Luka Jovic, our old friend who played against us in uh, the Sala Cup for Fiorentina, he went there as well. Um, and then obviously we know Olivier Giroud, Giroud went there. 
and it was it worked for them because they want to they want a Serie A from it. Um, so in terms of his uh, early days recruitment, this was probably the big one. This is when they went on to, to to I'm not sure if it was the first season or the second season it was there, but this was largely the spine that came in to help them win that title. A lot of these players were very important in that season. Uh, Brahim Diaz came in as well from Madrid on loan, who we saw, who we've seen in the Champions League for Madrid this season, be excellent for them. So he managed to get him on on loan. Uh, you've got Olivia Giroud came in, of course. Uh, Tanali came in from Brescia that year. Uh, Magnon replaced the departing Donnarumma and you've got Tomori. So a good mix of players there that I think on the whole, you can say largely most of these worked and were very important for that team uh, and got them a trophy at the end of the day. Unbelievable, isn't it? The, the, the quality of the players he's got in there. I mean, Tomori should be playing regularly for England, isn't for well, for one reason, basically. We know what it is. Uh, Moynan's a fantastic replacement for Donnarumma. Tonali, of course, is the Italian golden boy, or was. <laughs> I'm not sure he still is, but he certainly was. Yeah, these are the um, ages um, when, when they were signed. signed as well. Yeah. Uh, Adley's a great player. Giroud, you know, how many people would take a gamble on a 34-year-old Olivia Giroud? Well, Paolo Maldini been good did. for him. Paolo Maldini did. He obviously saw that Pace was not never an issue for the delivery of Giroud. He never had it when he was 21. So he's not likely to have it when he's 30, 34. Um, it's just his, his knack for sniffing out goals. He's fantastic at it and a fantastic signing. And Brahim Diaz, we saw last night when he came on a sub for Real Madrid, an outstanding player. So really good quality of signings there that Maldini's managed to get through the door. And as you say, it, it, it turned out into... Uh, a, a, a Serie A title, a Scudetto, as they call them. So, can't do much more than that. Yeah, I mean, it does get better. There's more. So, the following season, uh, a bit more of a mixed bag. Uh, when did Loftus Cheek come in? Was it the next one? I think it was Loft this season, wasn't it? Yeah, it, was it, might, have, this it season. might have been. It might not have even been Maldini that authorised that potentially then. Um, so, this was the one with the question mark over it. Of course, the biggest signing being uh, Charles de Catalare, the Belgian guy, who was extremely highly sought after. Everybody thought he was going to be a superstar. And it just, it was awful. It was a terrible first season for him. It was shocking. It didn't work for him at all. I still think he's going to be a great player. He's on loan right now at Atalanta. Ultimately, I think this <clears throat> this window is, what's, is what messed it up. Um, I think it... There was a bit of a disagreement about how much was available and what how they were going to recruit. I think this this window here kind of burnt a lot of bridges. This was an issue. They got Sergio Dest in from from Barcelona on loan. Um, the American that everybody thought was just going to rip it up and be one of the best fullbacks on the planet. Obviously, Americans were screaming that to us as they like to do, and it didn't happen. It didn't. Sorry, sorry, Americans in the chat. You know it's true. People were telling us he was going to be the next. The next best thing, it's not really worked out that way. Um, Origi didn't really work. Everybody thought he was going to be, you know, oh, Origi's a great player, great player. He just needs to move from Liverpool to a club where he's going to get minutes and then he'll be great. He'll be a first teamer. Mm, no, not not really. That didn't happen either. Um, Florenzi, again, in from Roma, he's a little bit older anyway. Junior Messias, I mean, he was an old transfer. And then the centre half was was a decent pickup, and he plays. But I mean, it wasn't the it wasn't the most glamorous of windows. Put it that way. I think for this window to be solid, Charles de Catalare had to work as a signing, and it didn't. So, but he still might. He still might, might he? he? Could go back to AC Milan and and, and pull up the trees, couldn't he? Is he young? This is why I mentioned that these transfers, some of them were a bit of a gamble, and. The thing is, if Charles Catalare works in the next couple of years, people will forget it was Maldini, but it was. Um, and he, he very well could come back and be a great player. You just don't know. He's doing pretty well. Is, it, is he Atalanta? He's doing pretty well for them, He's, isn't he? Yeah, Atalanta on loan. Uh, I mean, I've got Loftus cheek up at the moment. We can actually have a look. And uh, Catalare, how was he doing? He's got six goals and six assists for Atalanta. Scored and assisted in the, Euro uh, in the Europa League. Still 23 years old. And he's profiling quite well. Yeah, I mean, he looks like he's doing... 
I've not really watched him a lot this season, but he does look like he's doing a lot better because he had a shock in season. Um, yeah, his profile's a bit like Sanchez, Bowen, Gakpo, Chiesa. Yeah. I mean, I'm Definitely. happy for him because it was a bit of a shame because he really did, his form really did fall off a cliff. Um, anyway, so the most recent season, of course, this this isn't Maldini's doing. However, I think it's worth looking at it because you don't know what was in the pipeline before everybody left. You don't know how far ahead they plan, what names were kind of banded about, what the scouting reports, you know, we don't know. We don't know what happened in, the, in those meetings. So, of course, you've got some big names here. Uh, in Chukweze and Christian Pulisic that went in, um, who were both 24-year-old wingers. Or they Well, are they still 24? I think they're potentially a little bit older than that, are they? Um, yeah, I think they are older than that now. But two two very, very promising younger wingers. I think those are great pickups, uh, along with Loftus-Cheek as well. They were potentially scouting him before. And Noa Aquafor, a 23-year-old striker that we mentioned beforehand. So some really, really tidy pickups here. A good... They've basically picked up a spine, um, albeit not really any centre-halves of any note, apart from the young Pellegrino, 21-year-old. Uh, they did pick up, like I've already told you, our mate, Luka Jovic. Um, so they've really bedded out. They've got some depth. I think it was a good transfer window. Um, but we're not really privy to, you know... If he's done any of that, yeah. How much was him? How much wasn't him? Maybe none of it was him. But I would imagine there was some kind of structure in place. But I like this transfer window as well. I thought this was really solid for Milan. I thought it was quite important. Milan and their fans all threw their toys out the pram because um, who, who's the guy that went to Inter instead? I forget his name now. Inter striker. Uh, Did I? Oh, I mean, we're going to have to check it. <laughs> we're going to have to check it now, guys. Because I can't remember. Name. Well, I think I think there's a lot of people to know. I just can't remember his name. They were going to get him on a free transfer from. He was the guy that was it. Was he the guy at Frankfurt? Um, it's not even coming up with Inter Milan Turam. There you go. People know it was Turam. Turam, yeah. Yeah. So they wanted Turam on a free transfer as well. Um, so it was nearly, and they, they were all crying, a lot of AC Milan fans, some of the YouTubers that did uh, some of the preview shows with a few of our friendly channels uh, before we played them in the Champions League, they were all crying at the fact that they didn't get Turam. They didn't get Turam, Sandro Tonali's left, it's all, the, the club's on fire. I think they were just being a bit dramatic. I mean, I think that's a tidy transfer window, and they, they look stable, they look okay, they do need to kick on a bit, but... They've won, they've won a title recently as well. Where are so, they the now? Are they are they high up? They must be high up, surely. Uh, I can bring it up. I've, 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 I've not seen the Serie A table this year. I don't even know who's top or anything. Probably. I mean, I don't think Rome were having a great season this year, are they? So, if I remember rightly, um, it is. There you go. So this is it at the moment. So they're actually second. I mean, Inter have kind of run away with it somewhat on 83 points, um, which, you know, they got to the Champions League final last year. They're a good team. They've, they've been put together very well. They've only conceded uh, 17 goals, which is incredible. Um, a solid, solid defence there. But AC Milan is the second best in the country at that, at, at, well, this point right now. Um, and their defence is a little bit shaky. They've conceded considerably more than Juventus and Bologna, who are still in fourth. Good effort. So, but they've scored a lot more. 63 goals compared to 45 and 45. Yeah. So, over the past three years, you know, they've managed to win, win Serie A. They've won a Scudetto and they've built a reasonably good young side with a good spine that is still challenging at the top end of the league. So, you know, Maldini has to take some credit for a lot of that. I believe anyway. Um, I think he's not as tried and trusted as some of your some of your sort of names like uh, Paul Mitchell. I still think Paul Mitchell would be the very top of my list, um, but it is a superstar name. Players are going to want to come and speak to Maldini. It's it's going to be one of those kind of attraction things um, in terms of how much he actually does. I mean, I think there is a question mark over that, isn't there? Um, I guess so. Well, he's an option. He's an option, Kai. Definitely, he's one of the many options. I wouldn't say no. Put it that way. I'd love to see him come in. I'll be much, but must be honest. Um, just a legendary name, isn't he? 
Um, and just his name will bring players in. I'm sure of that will attract players. That's for certain. And it's, you know, align that to the the ambition of the club and the and the project of the club. Mm, yeah, it's a yes for me. That's for certain. Uh, but we can move on to the next subject now because I have a comment here from Clive who says, "Is there any truth in Jan Cuba Minty coming back to Newcastle and Ajax? None whatsoever." There, Clive is at fire order, unfortunately for you. But we are going to talk about Jan Cuba Minty now. Uh, but we'll do a few comments. Um, Kelly and Tosson on free transfers, all that for Sesco, says Michael. Uh, and then up the A1. Sorry, late evening, Billy, Alex, and all mods and chatters. Hope haven't missed anyone. Uh, probably not too am. A lot of people have got the two am. Yep. Yeah. KK Chia, John W, and Michael uh, got, got that right. So uh, Foxy says that Fatese was a big miss for Milan to replace Tenali. He went to into two. And I like coffee with his usual spiel, which we all love. If you enjoy the stream, don't forget to like button and subscribe. It's free to do so. Feel free to use the Super Chat feature or become a member and help support the channel. I think I may have something in the chat. Uh, no, absolutely not. Let's get back to this. Uh, people are correcting <laughs> correcting Clive. 80s Gamer says, uh, imagine bumping into Paolo Maldini and Greg's. Imagine that. Uh, up the Macum, uh, the Macum cabbies here. I just want to say up the Macums. I didn't mean that, obviously. <laughs> uh, Stick Eye says, I believe Maldini will join this Saudi connections now. And maybe, 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 maybe. Uh, Villa are 2-1 down in their tie. Um, uh, King Hoddle mentioned earlier, all English clubs could well be out of Europe tonight, the way things are going. Yeah, I mean, Liverpool were 3-0 down. Uh, West Ham, obviously, got to, I've got to try and topple the Bundesliga champions. Um, it, it's quite funny to to know, obviously, with with the recent sort of Dortmund and Bayern Munich getting through to the semi-finals of the Champions League. That's quite funny because everybody's everybody at the start of the year was kind of not giving Germany much credit or France, France and Germany that they, they weren't giving them any credit. Now the German league has got two Champions League semi-finalists. Both teams are not the best team in Germany this year. The best team in Germany is not even in the Champions League. They're in the Europa League in Bayer Leverkusen, who have run away with the Bundesliga. So, yeah, it just goes to show. Um, I don't think we're going to get that fifth spot, guys. That coefficient is well and truly absolutely gone. In the bin. Yeah, yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Well, it's not so. Young Cuba Minter. Um, he has got a well. Last last week had a team of the week card in FIFA or EA Twenty Four, as it's now called, with ninety nine plays, and I was fortunate enough to pack him. Um, but there you go. Let's have a look at Young Cuba Minte's stats and what, what he's doing for Feyenoord. Is he what we need for next season? We're going to have a look in a minute or two. Uh, Niles had a cheeky five on Liverpool to qualify at four to one. That'll be a good bet when it comes in. You wouldn't have past him, would you? But Atalanta are very good. And Paul said we've got to keep Isaac and Bruno. Uh, and then Mark says Isaac won't be sold to an English club. I don't think he'll be sold full stop if I'm perfectly honest. Young Cuba Minte stato. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Um, interesting topic. So, I mean, I've just found his uh, team of the week card. There you go. There it is. <laughs> yeah, Ninety on pace. Unreal. Unreal. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know it's a trivial thing, guys. I know it's FIFA. I know it's a football game. But the fact that somebody's doing well enough to get the attention and to be and to be included in something like this means they're doing something right. It's it's it is a positive step. Well, it is a video game, but it's still. It is good at the end of the day because we want to be involved in stuff like this, don't we? We need to be part of kind of the marketing and the hype if we're going to kind of grow globally because there's a lot of people abroad play FIFA. So it, it's – and I'm sure it's a very nice moment for him as a young man as well because all these kids grow up playing these games. So to be included and to have your own big Team of the Week card is quite is quite a nice achievement. So I'm sure he's probably got a copy of that somewhere and um, wherever he is. The 99 pacing's a myth, though. He, he really isn't. <laughs> When you play with him, he's very tanky. But there you go. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, he is very quick in real life. So, mm. so obviously, just kind of a little lone watch and checking in on him, seeing seeing how he's getting on, and he's doing rather well at the moment. Um, I was reading the the athletic article that they did on him. Um, in fact, I don't know who actually wrote it. It was it was Jacob Whitehead. So April the tenth. It was recently. There's been a few good articles uh, from the Athletic recently about sort of our, our stuff. Um, again, he, there's loads of really interesting points in this about how when he was 10 years old, he was arguing with his coach that he was going to be messy or he was messy and all these kind of jokes. He's always believed in himself and worked very hard. And that was what kind of dragged him into school um, as well. Uh, and there was an interesting point I wanted to point out 
Um, so this was a quote from him. So he told that he he, he was having an interview with a Danish newspaper, uh, the Julans Posten, whoever that is. Um, so and he said, football is like school for me. I learn something all the time. If there are no matches on TV, I watch highlights from previous matches. I follow the Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, the Bundesliga, Ligue 1. I study both the tactical things and the individual players. If a trick is done that I didn't know, I try it out in training the next day. So that's that's an interview from him when he was in Denmark, which I love that because he is a young man. And there's been a lot of people that have obviously just who don't really know a lot about him that have just blanket thrown the statement around. He's young. He's raw. He's explosive. He doesn't really understand the game yet. I, I think that's harsh. I think you can definitely see there's a player there who's willing to learn. Uh, and the fact that, you know, it, it, he said that in interviews, he's obviously very interested in, in football generally. There are a lot of players nowadays who just play football, aren't necessarily as interested in it. They're not obsessed with it. Whereas Minte does seem like he's got an, a bit of an obsession, which if you want to reach the top is kind of necessary, isn't it, really? Arokia, can you post in English, please? <laughs> in our chat are very educated, but I don't think many of us have got French A-levels or anything like that. David so, uh, Getter is the second person in my telephone. Is that what that says? Yeah, I think so. And he's in his fair. I mean, good for you, I guess. That's um, um, so. Right. We've got another five Benetian who's Wolfie Ed Benetian who's, who's replying in French to him, which is great. <laughs> uh, PSG air mad. That's pretty quick, commonplace for me. And that means PSG are shite, basically. Anyway, no, indeed. Oh, is he, oh, is he his little hater? Is he? It's fine, don't worry. We beat you, what, 5-2 five, five, two over two legs? So, it's fine, don't worry about it. Sank de. Sank de. And the, and the de, it was a very a very generous de at that. It should have been an un, because it was a bullshit penalty. Yeah, penalty and mad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, okay, Ooh. so, I mean, I did, I did briefly see something from Foxy that he's had. Did he say a shocking recent performances? I'm pretty sure not because wasn't the Ajax game really recent? And that was yeah, he, he mentioned that the home game against Ajax was fantastic, but the two away games um, that were previous to that weren't great. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, I can I can bring that up in a moment, and in fact, I probably it's time. Let's do it now. Why not? So, I mean, yeah, you can see exactly what Foxy's on about. So he he did take time to bed into this loan. Uh, let's go for let's scroll to the top and have a look at recent recent games. So he did take a bit of time. He wasn't always in the starting eleven, or always in the side. Um, but he's he's getting to that point now <coughs> where you can't really leave him out because of what he can do when he's when he's on form. Um, so this was the twenty second of Feb. Uh, oh wait, we actually watched that game um, against Roma. So he dropped a seven in that. He was okay in that game. I remember watching that, and he actually was doing quite a lot of tracking back. They were in a funny wing back shape on occasion. Um, it was nice to see him trying and listening to instructions on pitch as well. Um, and then the next game after this, which you didn't see three days later, he scored two goals, the only goals in that game, in a 2-0 win. Uh, he's dropped a really tidy rating against Groningen there with a, a, a 7.9. He scored against PSV away. Uh, he scored against Heracles with a 3-0 victory. He got an assist against Heronveen. Uh, and then, he, yeah, he's had a couple of stinkers there. So what was what what happened here? What I mean to be fair is that their goalkeeper with a nine point nine. I mean that might have something to do with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean their goalkeeper got a nine point nine. Foxy, I need to go and watch the highlights of this game. That seems a bit mental. So they played a four four two. Four four two. That's not a four four two. Let me have another beer. Sorry guys. That's a four three three with Mint on the right hand side. Uh, so he got a five point eight. What did he do wrong then? Uh, he got 0.45 xG, three shots, possibly could have scored, a couple of missed chances, didn't complete any dribbles. Oh, he got bullied physically. Zero out of six ground rules. That might have had something to do with it. So whoever Brian Platt was, looks like he had a good game against him. Wasn't he in um, Coronation Street? <laughs> I mean, he doesn't look like he was in Coronation Street. He looks very Dutch. Uh, um, yeah, he does. Yeah. Seven out of eight ground rules. Yeah, there you go. You can see who's done him. I mean, it might not be the case. Again, I'm just I'm just having a guess with an educated guess with statistics, I guess. It looks like he's just kind of struggled against his opposite number in that game, which happens. He's young. It's going to happen. Uh, you know, maybe he got in his head. 
However, the following game is the one that's been all over kind of social media. Um, it was it was an incredible, incredible day. Uh, they even recorded him after this game walking home and they did the whole, you know, it was very cute. He was walking home because he doesn't have a driving license. Well, of course he is. Um, how else is he going to get home? So let's have a look at this game. So he got a perfect 10, which on sofa score, I thought yeah, that was generally only, yeah, I mean, it's generally only reserved for Messi, really. <laughs> you don't often get 10s on sofa score. That's, it means you've done something very, very well if you've, um, if you've gotten a 10. So two goals and one assist in what is a, a historical, a historical fixture there and a historical result in this fixture. A 6-0 win against Ajax is is just unheard of. It is absolutely unheard of. It, it the, It's probably the last time anything that big happened was, you know, when Manchester City beat Man United, what was it, like 6-1 with, with when Balotelli was there. It's fixtures like that that kind of upset, you know, everything. It's a bit of an unexpected result. Um, so let's have a look at this game. So there he is out on the right-hand side. I mean, he's, he, the winger on the other side has dropped a, a 9.2 as well. God, they had an absolute mare as well. Look at them. So let's go and have a look at his data for that game. So he only played he only played 76 minutes. He got his two goals, three shots on target, five completed dribbles, three key passes, three big chances created. He was very good physically in this game. 10 out of 15 duels. Um, he fouled twice and got a free kick for his team. Four tackles. That's more like it. That's probably the game of his life to date. Um, absolutely incredible from the young man. It really, really was. Um, and he deserved all the credit he got on, on sort of TV and social media because he did get a lot of praise for that performance. Um, and then again, we'll, we'll, we'll let Foxy bring the, bring the tone down with his apparently poor game against Fortuna away. So what did he do? Uh, they played a 5-4-1, apparently. Yeah, I mean, lower, lower opposition in a big, what I'm assuming is probably quite a big uh, low block. I mean, they looked like they had a lot more success going down that left side, judging by ratings. Um, so he looks like he's had a go on the left as well. He's kind of been, a, been everywhere. Three completed dribbles, three shots, one big chance missed, half of his duels. I mean, it's not terrible. I'd have to watch the game. Um, but he doesn't look like he's profiled too poorly in the data. So, <clears throat> yeah, recent games for him. Uh, a bit, of, I'd say mixed, but I feel like that's unfair. Look at all the goals in that. Sometimes it doesn't matter, does it? If you're progressing well and you're learning your trade and you're putting in that many goals, um, I'm fine with that. Like, he's not going to be perfect every day. I know some of our fan base aren't keen on players who are, can be inconsistent, but <laughs> we won't make that comparison now. Can we look at some and, of the European games, Alex? Uh, European games, of course. Uh, I mean, we'd have to go back a bit. So, against Roma, I think he did come on as a sub. Yeah, he did. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. He came on 71st minute, dropped to seven rating. And again, he, he was sort of tracking back. He got involved a little bit in their box. And there wasn't really a lot. Roma had a lot of the ball in this kind of situation. So he did very well physically in his duels. And I do remember him doing a lot of tracking back in this game as well. So um, in terms of previous games, who else have they played recently in Europe? So he's been involved for Gambia. Uh, there was a... So there was the other Roma fixture. Who did they play beforehand? They definitely played Celtic because he scored, didn't he? Let's have a look. Previous. Oh, they played Goa Eagles. Atletico Madrid. Uh, they played Atletico Madrid in the Champions League, lost 3 2. Yeah, so he, he has got a goal this season in the Champions League. Um, I can't remember who that was against, though. I mean, Celtic. we can probably find it. Oh, it was Celtic, Celtic you said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so they won 2 0 at home. So he must have scored, scored uh, in yeah, the reverse fixture. A park edge, yeah. Which I can't seem to find. Where is the next fixture? Uh, they beat, oh God, they beat Ajax as well at the start of the season. I didn't realise that. God, Ajax have been absolutely pumped by them, haven't they? 10, ten oh. goals to nothing over two legs. Bloody hell. Um, oh, there he there is. is. Yeah, there it is. So he dropped to 6.9 and he scored against Celtic. Uh, so he didn't even start. There he is. 54th minute. So he's he's come on for this guy on the right-hand side. 
And he's had Callum McGregor and Greg Taylor as his opposite numbers. Let's have a look how he did. So we got booked. He looks like he was basically playing a bit of a roaming role there. His heat map's all over the place. Yeah. Um, with his goal, uh, 0.57 XG from one shot on target. He had a shot blocked. Uh, missed a big chance. One accurate cross, a key pass. Mixed physically, two out of seven. Again, he's a baby, so he'll get, he'll grow. Um, but yeah, recent recent performances, really, really, really solid. And then I'm sure all of you want me to put the FB ref on because it's it's mental. Um, nine goals and four assists this season, which for 1,200 minutes, just under 1,300 minutes, I think is magnificent for the young man. It's brilliant. And he's not overperforming really either. He's 8.3 XG. 3.7 xag so he's m marginally overperforming this is cons this is he, i think he could sustain this it's a uh, goal contribution every game isn't it virtually it, well and the fact that he's he's got good minutes in the champions league and the europa league and he's playing for his country he'll be getting loads of good experience at senior level um which is really important it's a bit it will mean we can integrate him a lot quicker into what we're doing the more experience he gets like this it's very important for him um, I would, again, I have to stress this. I cannot stress this enough. Ignore the green. The green is the green is the percentiles against the other 14 leagues, guys. It's not against the big five leagues. So this is going to be saying that he's really good in comparison to right wingers in the MLS. Yeah, we know that. He's probably better than most of the right wingers in the MLS. So, again, apologies for any Americans tonight. I, I don't know why I'm going in on Americans. Um, <laughs> so, it's better to look at the numbers. So, 7.9 progressive carries is very, very important. I mean, I think what be what might be more useful is if we get Miggy up, shall we? Although I can't type in Miggy because they're not going to know what that means. I've got to type in Miguel Almiron. <laughs> So, Miggy is getting, for context, <coughs> 3.61 progressive carries. So, remember the number, not the percentile. 3.61 progressive carries. Minta is getting 7.9. So, double. More than double. So, he's definitely very, very good at being a proper winger. Absolutely bombing down the wing, um, super, super explosive, super, super raw. Again, the shot volume is nice and high as well at 3.43 shots a game, which is really, really good. If we compare that to Miggy, Miggy is taking 2.2. So his shot volume is a lot higher as well, presumably because he's very quick and he's getting into positions nice and early. Um, shot creating action. So he's, he's allowing teammates to have six shots as a result of what he's creating. Um, and what's his assist total at? 0.28. You would expect a guy with this this much pace that he would start to rack up some more assists as well. Uh, but his defensive contribution is very, very good as well. Three tackles per game. Uh, what's Miggy get him? 1.9. So that's why ignore the percentiles. Look at the numbers. So fair enough, Miggy's playing in a much tougher league. That's got to be said. However, the, the general numbers are very promising. Uh, and when we were looking at this guy a few months ago, it was based on small a small amount of data. Now he's played nearly thirteen hundred minutes. This is this makes this is a bit more valid. I think we can genuinely sort of say this is this is the guy's play style. Um, <laughs> strangely enough, he matches very similarly to to his um, the other winger on the team. You've got Dan James in there, Somerville, who of course we've been linked with. Uh, and if we go down and compare his first season, well, his, his season in Denmark in the Danish Super League. Uh, so he's played roughly the same amount of minutes this season as he did in Denmark. And he's definitely he's massively superseded what he got before. So in Denmark, he got four goals, four assists. He's already on nine and four, and the season's not over yet. So he's developing really, really well. He's definitely taken that step up from the Danish League to the Eredivisie. Um, does it mean he's going to be good enough to take the step up to the Premier League next year? I think that's really unlikely. <laughs> I know a lot of people are screaming out for him to come and play. Um, but it's a huge leap. And you've, you've got to understand some of the the tactical elements to playing in, for a Newcastle United side nowadays. You know, it's not about how good you are on the ball or how fast you can run. It's It's about, do you know exactly what we're going to do in these 25 situations? It's tricky. 
you know, you could maybe if we have him as an impact sub um, or somebody who you can just say, right, go and run and do things. Uh, but we're not really about that anymore. You know, look at the hard work that somebody like Anthony Gordon puts in. He knows exactly what his job is in in every giving situation. Um, I don't know what you feel about that, Billy, but... Well, I, 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 something I hadn't thought about, actually, but um, two gamers said it here. And given our financial restraints, or supposed financial re- restraints, is this something you consider? Four to five clubs, including Sporting and Benfica, wanting to sign Minty in the summer for 20, 25 million, would anyone sell? That's an interesting point, that, isn't it? I mean, so you could get clear of your FFP and your PSR, would it, would he be one you could sell and preserve your, your Isaacs and, and, and Brunos and whoever you like, really? It's an interesting point now. I think I, I think I would. I mean, that's a big shout. That's a big it shout. A big I didn't shout. know the Gambian team is called the Gambia as well. Yeah, it's the name of the country, isn't it? The Gambia. The Gambia. Um, yeah. So, current market value at 12 million euros on transfer marks. What did we pay for him? Seven. Yeah. It says, ooh, it says what? 12 million? No. Hang on a minute. Two million. It's, no, eight million. Why are there so many numbers? Eight million. <laughs> I thought it was seven million pounds. I remember that. Six or seven million pounds. I remember that being the number in some of the articles. We'll double check. I'm pretty sure it was around that. Um, so, yeah, 20, 25 mil. I would agree with you, but I think we need to start playing hardball like Real Madrid. I know that's crazy, crazy early to be saying things like that, but we need to be putting buyback clauses in these players' contracts. Yes, absolutely. And first dibs clauses as well. So, if we wanted to buy him, we could buy him back for a reasonable amount. We could say, look, we'll sell him to you for 20, 25. But if we want to buy him back, we can buy him back for 40 or 50 so the price doesn't get super like too inflated and we get first dibs. Yeah, and like, also maybe sell on clauses if we if we don't want him. I'd consider it purely for the amount of wiggle room it would give us in FFP. Yeah, it, it's definitely an option. Um, but I, I mean, ideally, I just don't want to be doing that at all. I'd rather be keeping our exciting players and getting rid of our deadwood. You know, imagine if Ryan Fraser ends up sticking around for another season and this guy gets sold. What kind of message does that send? Like, well, it's, yeah, it I, hurts I understand a that. Bit. I understand that. And Foxy says, yeah, he deserves a chance pre season to impress. But another valuable loan seems most likely depends what teams are interested. Loan out, and if he does well again, his price will be even more. So I guess you could invest by loaning them again, and yeah, and, and maybe get more money next next it offered next it summer, or of course playing mm. him. Um, but loan him to a Serie A side, <laughs> teach him tactics. He needs to be given a chance to see how he does in the Premier League. Min say. Uh, we have lots of other players to move before him. Just saying, it'd be neat. And if, if, the, if the case is that someone's going to offer 25 million straight down or 30 million straight down, you know, it, it, it gets rid of all those problems in one foul swoop, doesn't it? Uh, that's I'm, it's, it's an interesting point, to be honest. Uh, Charles has uh, given us another 50 Norwegian kroner. He would say, I would play Isaac because he's on form and can lose that if Benz. Obviously, he's talking about uh, Wilson returning to training this week, Stato. Um, obviously, it's yeah, awesome. that's positive as well. Very positive. Yeah. I tell you what, I've, I don't know if I, I had a little thought today about this. Stay with me on this one. I don't know if you would agree with this. I am pleasantly optimistic about Wilson's running purely because for the first time in forever, this wasn't a lower body injury. Well, so I I, I'm, I'm a bit curious as to see if we can get him up to match fitness before the season ends, because we've got a few games left now. We've got a bit of time. Um, we might actually see a bit better out of Callum Wilson in the running. We might be able to get a bit more in terms of energy pressing, a little bit more pace, a little bit more, just a bit more zip um, because he's had that. It, it, what, he's not coming back from a hamstring injury this time. He's coming back from a pec injury. So maybe that rest might have done his longevity some good and his legs. And then it means he can finish the season strong and we can either keep him or he's fresh and fit for the shop window, basically. Yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah. He, he's definitely getting minutes, isn't he? He's going he's, he's, you know, to give us an option to take Isaac off, which we haven't had recently. Um, Isaac's been doing the full games for the past four or five games, which is something we haven't seen of him since he came to the club. And he's had to do it purely because there's nothing to replace him with. Um, so we're having Wills on the bench just to give Isaac a little bit of rest, even. It's going to be an advantageous thing for us. Yeah. Uh, and of I mean, course, if a game's it's going to go for it, up, isn't it? 
you can yeah. bring him off, right? But yeah. half an hour to go. Uh, Luda Tunes says selling Minte could be good business. We don't know if he would even be up to the Premier League, Dutch League, way, way easier than ours. It's a fair point. Um, but again, it's something we need to find uh, out for ourselves, really, isn't it? Uh, Wilson should be solid for the remainder. In theory, watch he gets injured, says Anthony. Uh, a bigger feed is summer, says William. Uh, certain Geordie says, Ever, after everything that's happened, I'll be absolutely delighted to get sixth. I think we all would. Uh, and I think we'll have to finish sixth if we want Europa League the way things are going. Unless Man City win the Cup, of course. Uh, fingers crossed, we need we need to, if he's going to be in, in transfer window, uh, fit that is, of course. Uh, not for too much long. I don't know what that means. Uh, or, or Wilson knows the Euros are coming up. Oh, that's cynical, says going. Well, of course, he's, he's got ambitions to play for England still. Surely he has. So, it could, got to be a good thing for us in, you know, in the running. It has to be. I don't think he would get a call-up anyway. I think... Not now. Even if he comes back and scores four or five goals and looks fit, I don't think he gets called up. I think I think Watkins and Tony are the shoe-ins now. Unless unless one of them gets a big injury, um, I just can't. I can't see him. I can't see that happening. Uh, Josh says, love him, but for me, Wilson needs to be at the top of our sell list. Yeah, possibly. Callum may yet have a brilliant run now through his last six games. That's quite right. I do have another, another I told you so as well. Somebody's just mentioned Willock. I did say a couple of weeks ago he was done for the season and everybody went, oh, he might come back. No, he's, he's done. And now it's been announced he is done for the season. So, And a few people talking about whether we should sell him. That, that's been doing the rounds. I think Geordie Josh has done a lot of videos on that as well. Um, I don't know where this has come from. Is there, is there been an article on this or are people just generally making content about possibly selling Willock? We spoke about it off stage last night, didn't we? The other night, didn't we? Strange enough. Yeah, I think it was just just a general thought, though. I don't know if. Yeah, I wasn't suggesting it for all the team China, but I mean, given the fact that Elliot Anderson is now ready, we think you know, yeah, clearly is to, to have a more of a, a prominent role in the side. Where does Joe Willock sit now? I mean, in, in, I just in, don't in think anybody of... values Willock as high as we do, though. We know what a fully fit Joe Willock can be. He's an absolute tank. He's a marauder. He's an athlete. His passing range is great. He can score. We know that Willock's great, but I don't think I don't think he's got that respect from a lot of other teams. So I don't think we'd get a great value for him. I, I can't see us getting what would we need for him. We would need way more than forty for him, surely. But I don't think anybody would pay that. Maybe not. Maybe not. Is that one going? Says King Hoddle. More than likely, we we, we think. Uh, I guess it all depends on if he wants to go or not. Um, Channel mm. thinks we should just sell Willock. Uh, and Looney Tunes says we have to sell someone decent for decent money. There is no way around it. I can't understand why our fan base can't accept this. This is how all teams operate. We are not the exception. Yeah, this is what we're suggesting the Minte thing, really. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, but Looney Tunes, I think the problem is, dude, is 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 the Isak and Bruno suggestions specifically. And obviously yeah. people are getting a bit of a bee in their bonnet about, about the Isak price because you've got Arsenal fans banding around 80 million. Um which is ludicrously low. Like we're not even going to make money on that, really. So, I think that's the major, the major issue. But if we if we were to get reasonable money, sort of somewhere between fifteen and thirty for a player like Wilson or Almiron, I think people would be fine with that generally. Yeah, we would indeed. Anyway, we've come to the end of our hour. Uh, we've we've done Maldini. We've done Mince. That's where the M and M thing came to the night. Both, of course, there. So, then beginning with M. Um, and confuse a few people. They actually thought we were really getting Marshall Mathers on the show. Obviously not going to happen. <laughs> but I think we've done a good deep dive on those two, Stato. And yeah, TTR Friday tomorrow night. And then we Lord knows what's happening over the weekend because there's no football for us. Of course, it's FA Cup semi-final week. And unfortunately, we're not in no said semi-finals. Uh, so until tomorrow night for TTR Friday, anything to say, Stato? Um, no, not overly. Hope for hopefully <laughs> Minte's decent. We'll see you tomorrow, guys, for TTR Friday. No way yeah, the TTR, Friday TTR Friday tomorrow night, folks. Will be a fun show as always, so get yourself in for that. But until then, have a very good rest of your Thursday evening. Good night, folks. Come back and check on some Bye. Uh-huh.